I've pulled all my strengths and my wisdoms and my I, I got on that I tried to get on my last that, that finishing track she was on and yeah. trying to bring it on the home stretch. <laughs> so we can get this in our belly. I mean I think this is a liberating message. You go you go on back over it and you allow the spirit of God to uh, interpret some of the things that were said. Well, most of this is we're very practical. It didn't take a lot. It don't take, I think, a third grade to get most of this, to be honest with you. Uh, you had to be pretty stubborn and set in your ways to reject it. I mean, who don't want love? You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants love. Lack of identity is basically uh, one of the profundities of uh, having a false identity is uh, the lack of love and acceptance. You know, you find a person that's pretty healthy and strong and Pretty, uh, committed to whatever uh, positive force that God has given them, you have, and I guarantee you, you dig around a little bit, you can find out that they had a pretty healthy home, you know, and uh, had a strong foundation, and wasn't a lot of discord. They just had, you know, and they're pretty, they're pretty assertive, pretty good people. We know good ain't good enough with, with the Lord, but. Um, I just wanted to uh, put that in there. Let's go right into the Word. Right into the Word. I, I normally try to summarize, but I'm going to try not to as best as I can. We went to a few scriptures on the last time. We, we were able to find out those 17 things that cannot keep us from the love of God. Over in Romans uh, 8, chapter 31 to 39, there's 17 things. And we said those 17 is actually... This is the correct symbolism. I had to correct myself. This 17 is the number of overcoming the enemy. It's the number for victory. So the number 17 in scripture is the number of victory. Praise the Lord. Then I thought about it. I said, wow. We just had 17 years of ministry. Now going into the 18th year. So this past year should have been uh, a year of victories. Yeah. Overcoming the <laughs> Complete victory. A complete victory. So we discussed that. We talked. To, we went over to 1 John 4, 17 to 18. We looked at the perfect love that cast out all fear. As a kingdom believer, as a person that understands love and, and, and what the provision of love that, that uh, Jesus uh, instituted on behalf of the Father, we found out that we don't have to have torment. We can approach God without reservation. We don't have to go through the whole conundrum of sacrifices and wait on pointed feasts. You know, it was a system they had in place in order to approach God in the Old Testament. We don't have to go through that system. We don't have to wait on Sundays and Wednesdays. And we don't have to wait on an altar call. We don't have to wait on somebody to call us out and lay hands on us. We can really, really, really take advantage of approaching God on behalf of ourselves. We don't need nobody to stand proxy for us. Knowing all these things, just imagine how graceful we should be. And so fluent in our love with the Lord. No hitches, no glitches. No hurdles, no speed bumps. None of that. Under bridge. Perfect access to the Lord. We can. And that love is a very important. I'm going to go through a bunch of scriptures this morning. And I want to walk you through scriptures. I promised last week I'm going to walk you through love. So it won't just be a theory. It's going to be some practical things that you probably overlooked. But it's going to help you. It's going to enhance you. I want you to be enhanced. I don't want you to be educated this morning. I want you to be enhanced. Thank God for getting you intellectually sound. But I'm talking about I want you to be enhanced in your knower, in your belly, without a shadow of a doubt. So I don't never have to reteach this subject. That's my goal. That's, that's why I've been plowing. I don't. I don't want to have to revisit this. If I do, I don't want to have to do it out of. Uh, uh, or how to put it? Have to. I want to be able to teach it because it just become a part of the curriculum, probably part, part of uh, understanding the foundations and something along those lines in a school setting. But I don't want to have to try to twist your arm and get you to get engaged to this whole thing because by nature, God is love. And by nature, I'm connected forever to that facet. 
to that attribute of God. I'm connected forever. There's not absolutely nothing in my life that can separate me from that love. Nothing. Nothing. And people get afraid to say, well, if you tell folks that, they're going to go do what they want to. No, no, it was already there. It was already there. They didn't need a license for me to do what they want to do. Folks, I've been accused of a lot of things, but I have never been accused of uh, putting something in your head to make you want to do wrong. If you did wrong, it was because of your own actions. It come from me. It didn't stand for me. It was your interpretation of what I said. Ultimately, God wants to get us to a place that we can start growing. I'm telling you, your growth is connected to love. Your growth in Him and your awareness of the kingdom is connected to your love walk. Amen? Amen. So we, we, we went to 1 John 4, 17 and 18. We dissected, as I said, and we talked about how now we're children of God and that Jesus wants to fill our hearts with his love. And once we get full of God, everything else comes into order. Amen? Amen. And we have to understand this. Now, just like anything in the kingdom, just like anything that God has afforded towards us or for us, you've got to understand, in order to, to, to tap into whatever screen it may be, whatever functionality it may be, whatever tenet or whatever principle, you have to have, there's one thing you got to have. What is it? Faith. You can't even get love without faith. You know what I'm saying? So you have to do it by faith. You have to do it by faith. Faith worketh by love. Galatians 5 and 6. Faith worketh by love. We know love is the greatest, but you can't tap into it because your feelings are going to be subjective. Your feelings are going to try to seek to disqualify you. Your actions, you know what I'm saying? So it's got to be by faith. And it's vulnerable because it's void of feeling at first. If you're looking for euphoria, it's not going to be you don't get juiced in your veins with love mm. off the top. You get what I'm saying? You don't get that high. When you first get saved, you got that six months. That's that, he give you a loner. <laughs> he give you love on loan. He say, you, go, you can try this or you can feel this for now. But then after, after you huh? your honeymoon, yeah. So after you get done with that, after he give you that loner and that, that experience with him and that, that earnest, that, that welcome package, you get what I'm saying? All the perks is wrapped up, and then all of a sudden you find yourself sobering up. Now he wants you to put on the big boy pants. And then and it's up to us to get to the point to show you, to, 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 to we woo you with the emotions of the gospel. We connect with you in your feelings at first. That's, that's why you accepted them, because you, you felt bad, you felt condemned, convicted, or you, you needed some help, and you you got teary-eyed, you scream, you get emotional, and all those other stuff, you know. But then we have to sober you up with the gospel and share, and share with you that the glad, the glad tightening of good things is, is so much more than our emotions. That God has, through, through the provision of the cross, He forever has sealed us and given us the provision that we needed. That we'll never have to worry about staggering at the promises of God. We'll never have to worry about hitting and missing. So I want to try to intensify what I just said so I can bring you to a point where, it, in fact, there's a love, we're going to look at the Song of Solomon, that is so passionate, it don't take no for an answer. And that no is not from God, that no is in you. That no is from the circumstances, not from God. It's always a good pleasure to give us stuff. Timing is everything, but maturation is important, you know. God loves us so much that He give us the down, He give us installments. Yeah. Be, be it healing, deliverance, be it prophetic words, He give us pieces. He don't give full disclosure. He just give you enough so you can make a move. Amen. 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 Oh okay. yeah. So go to Second Corinthians five thirteen. For whether we beside ourselves, it is God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. Whether we be beside ourselves, it is who? To God. Or whether we be sober or alert or aware, it is for who? Your cause. Mm -hmm. For the love of Christ constraineth. 
For the love of Christ constraineth, constraineth us. us. Because we thus what? Judged. Because we thus judged that if one died for all, then we're all dead. One died for all. all. Remember we said all men are reconciled. Mm -hmm. All men are not saved. All men are reconciled. He died for all. Only problem is that the church has got, got a glitch in the memo. And, and, and because of our own selfishness, we found out that he only loved us. Am I right? So everybody else got to put me on pause. Y'all got to hold up a second. It's a list of things you got to do to get that love. I got it already, so you got to hold off. Most of the gospel that we hear in churches is on that frequency. Am I right? Help me out. That's what they say. They say, you know what? You know, uh, there's some things you have to do. So it says he died for all. He died for the mean person in your life. He died for the sweetest person in your life. He died for all. The one you want to send to hell in the handbasket, he died for him. Yeah. Them, her, whoever it is. It. But he died for all. And we know that. You can see it in the parables. He, he, he loved the world so much, he bought the whole field. Remember that? To get one pearl. One pearl. Not one pearl. Like he didn't know what a pearl was at. Am I right? He knew what a pearl was. God's eyes is there every place. But Jesus wanted to buy the world. And that is so significant to me. And it's, it's a fulfillment of Romans 5 and 8. That even in my darkness he can find me. That's powerful. When I sit back and think about that. He bought the whole world. He bought, he, he, he bought, he paid for ISIL. ISIS. Mm -hmm. Radical Islam. Mm -hmm. All of, you know, they're doing the, I mean, the stuff they're doing, the, oh my goodness. But he died for them. And we got to project that. You know, we get around folks and we don't project it. We, we rather just let people know how holy we are. You know, we go on their place, we go to their meetings, and we go in their environment, and then all of a sudden, we want to let our hair down and tell everybody how wretched and messed up they are because they're not like us. 